from August the 1st to August the 31st, and they organized and created a program for the universal liberation and emancipation of African people. August the 1st to August the 31st, 1920. They would come back again, 1921. They would come back again, 1922. They would come back again, 1923. And we still have the UNIA conventions 100 years, more than 100 years after the organization was founded 106, 107 years ago. 25,000 Africans from all over the world inside of Madison Square Garden 25,000 outside of Madison Square Garden. The white man said he's never seen nothing like this in his life. The black man all over the world was ready to fight for one Africa, a United States of Africa, with Marcus Garvey as the leader. And they came to New York City in August of 1920 to build a government, not a church, a government. Not a club, a government. The Garvey movement was a government of African people in exile. Never before have you seen it. Never again will you see it. Never before have you seen it. Never again will you see it. Never before have you seen it. Never again will you see it. The red, black, and green flag comes from that. The red, black, and green flag comes from the 1920 convention. This is the most popular flag for black people in the world. Now you know why. This is the most popular flag for black people in the world. Now you know why. This is the most popular flag in black America. It's the most popular flag in the Caribbean. It's the most popular flag in Europe for blacks. It's the most popular flag in Africa. Every country in Africa has one of those colors in its flag. Every country in Africa has one of the Garvey colors in its flag because that's what Garvey means to us. Kwame Nkrumah put a black star on the flag of Ghana to represent the black star line. Brothers and sisters, as we close out tonight's seminar, I hope you enjoyed it. Wait a minute. I know y'all probably got some questions. I'm about to wrap this up. I know y'all got some questions. Somebody said, are you still on? You don't have to ask me that. You can check that. I have listened to you on Instagram tonight. And I can say thank you for all your knowledge. Some information I didn't know. And some you really explained very clearly. I am learning from you and taking notes as you speak. Continue to do what you do. That was a sweet message. <clears throat> Let's see what else I have. Dr. Umar, why not move in silence? Why educate wherever you can? Don't you think the threat is bigger if they know how you move? Prideful is okay at times, but meek and discreet is even better. Your enemies will not know how to attack you. Blessings and peace be unto you, brother. Stan Grant. Let me answer her. I want to answer her. I want to answer her. We are all born into this world with a certain destiny and a certain energy. Like Marcus Garvey before me, Dr. Umar Ifatunde is not meant to move under the shadows. I am, like Garvey, a mass organizer. I was given a silver tongue for a reason. I was given this intelligence for a reason. I agree with my sister. Some of us have to move in silence, but not me because I am Ogun. Ogun is the Orisha of the war. Ogun is the Orisha of nation building. Ogun is the Orisha of strength. Ogun is the Orisha of power. Ogun is the Orisha of will. With all due respect, I do not believe my role in the struggle is to duck, hide, bob, weave, negotiate. We do need that. 
That's not my job. I am a Garvey type. I am a Leo Ogun. There's no way being born under the sun and being born under the archetype of the deity of war that I'm supposed to be quiet and tuck my tail. I am meant to roar like the lion I am. And I am going to roar like the lion that I am. I am doing exactly what I am supposed to do. I can only hope and pray that y'all don't let Negroes destroy me the way y'all let them destroy the most honorable Marcus Garvey. Let me see what else we have. Why was my Jamaican hero, Marcus Garvey, pardoned by the U.S. president? I already answered that because they were scared of a global black uprising. OK, and also because he knew Marcus Garvey had been wrongly and falsely in prison, that it was a J. Edgar Hoover setup because they could they were too threatened by the promise of what the Black Star Line steamship would have done. Dr. Umar, my name is Osaruyi. Osariyi. Os Os I got to work on that, brother. I thank you, Nigerian, as am I, ancestors. And I was wondering how you would tell a black man to navigate being at a predominantly white institution. I want to be able to continue with a proud African man. Oh, this is a queen. This is a queen. My apologies, sister. I want to be able to continue to be. Oh, no, it's a brother. I want to continue to be a proud African man without Neanderthals. I got one word for you, brother. Do not catch the snow bunny virus. Do not catch the snow bunny virus. Do not catch the snow bunny virus. How many of you all knew? How many of you all knew that if you had the snow bunny virus, you could not join the Marcus Garvey movement when Garvey was around? Did you know that? When Marcus Garvey was leader of the UNIA. You could not join the UNIA if you were married to a non-African. That is a fact. Marcus Garvey did not tolerate the snow bunny crisis. Marcus Garvey did not tolerate the snow bunny crisis. If you were married to a non-African, you could not join the Garvey movement. That is a fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. It is a fact. There's a documentary on YouTube about Marcus Garvey that was published by WHYY PBS more than 10 years ago. I do tell people to watch it, but I want people to know there's a lot of lies in that documentary. And when it was published, the Honorable Marcus Garvey Jr., who just joined the ancestors on December the 8th, his brother, Dr. Julius Garvey, who was still alive in New York, uh, Dr. Uh, Malefi Asante of Afrocentricity here in Philadelphia, and other black scholars wrote editorials criticizing PBS and WHYY for lying and misrepresenting the most honorable Marcus Garvey in that documentary. There were lies in there. They claimed that he stole money. Totally false. The UNIA hired the top tax accountants in New York to handle the books for the Black Star Line. Garvey did not handle the books himself. He paid the top accountants in New York City to handle the money for the UNIA and for the Black Star Line. He could be guilty of no such thing because he did not touch the money. He refused to. Okay, these are facts. They also try to say that Marcus Garvey got his speaking style from some white preacher. Excuse me, Marcus Garvey was part of the National Club in Jamaica. He taught young people how to give speeches and how to debate. He was a great debater himself in Jamaica before he even got to America. What are you talking about? They really tried to disparage Garvey. They claimed that he used the money for himself when he didn't even touch the money for the organization. So although I think there's a lot of good factual information in the PBS documentary, there's also a lot of lies in the PBS documentary as well. One of the things that came out of the 1920 convention, along with the red, black, and green flag, 
One of the things that came out of the 1920 convention, along with the red, black, and green flag, was the Declaration of Rights. The Declaration of Rights for the African peoples of the world. Okay? I want to read you a few of the Declaration of Rights. They go to Black Cross Nurses. They go to Black Cross Nurses. Black Cross Nurses of Garvey. Black Cross Nurses teaching people how to eat to live. Black Cross Nurses. Free medical care in the black community. Black Cross Nurses. That's right, brothers and sisters. That's right. We were the first to do it. We were the first to do it. Everybody else copied off of us. We were the first to do it. Black Cross Nurses. That's right. That's right. And guess what, black woman? I got something for the sisters. I got something for the sisters. I got something for the sisters. Did you know that black women had their own military in the UNIA? Did you know black women had their own military in the UNIA? It was called the Universal African Motor Corps. Black women had their own military. Black women had their own military, the Universal African Motor Corps. Marcus Garvey was so committed to the equality of black man and woman. The most honorable Marcus Garvey was so committed to the equality of black man and woman that every division of the Garvey movement had to have a man president and a female president. I'm going to say it again. In the Garvey movement, every division had to have a man president and a lady president. Did y'all hear me, sisters? Did y'all hear me, sisters? In the Garvey movement, the women were equal and you had to have a lady president right next to the man president. That's Garvey. Black women had their own military in the Universal African Motor Corps. They own military. In fact, I'm going to give you another piece of Garvey history. When did the white woman get the right to vote? When was the 19th Amendment of the United States Constitution ratified? I'm about to blow y'all mind. Feminists, I want my feminists to listen up. I want my feminists to listen up. I want my feminists to listen up. Yes. 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 When did the 19th Amendment get ratified? Or was it the 21st Amendment? What was the amendment that gave a white woman the right to vote? Hold on. Let me look it up. I'm going to blow your bubble with this. Nineteenth Amendment. The 19th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution was ratified on August the 18th, 1920. The 19th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution giving white women to vote was ratified on August the 18th of 1920. The 19th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution was ratified on August the 18th of 1920. Do y'all want to know why? Do y'all want to know why? Oh, I'm giving you Garvey tonight. I'm giving you Garvey tonight. I'm giving you Garvey tonight. The reason the white woman got the right to vote on August the 16th of 1920 in the middle of Garvey's convention. In the middle of Garvey's convention. In the middle of Garvey's convention, the 19th Amendment got ratified. Now, I'm going to tell you how. And I'm going to give you the receipt so you can go research it. Y'all ready? Are y'all ready? When white women saw that Marcus Garvey was treating the black woman equal, when white women saw that Marcus Garvey was treating the black woman equal and that there was a lady president for every division and the black woman had a right to vote inside of Madison Square Garden during the Garvey convention and the black woman had her own military, the white women wrote letters to the president of the United States and the U.S. Congress saying, how dare you let this black man give his own black woman 
full equality, including the right to vote at his convention, and we don't even have a right to vote, and it embarrassed the U.S. government. Marcus Garvey embarrassed the U.S. Marcus Mosiah Garvey embarrassed the U.S. government so bad that in the middle of his convention, they ratified the 19th Amendment and gave the white woman the right to vote. If you don't believe me, do your research. That's facts. That's facts. You can't compare the most honorable Marcus Garvey to no other leader you have ever known. None of them can tie his shoes. None of them. The woman got the right to vote because of Garvey. You out your mind. Talking about you want me to debate your leader, your little hustler leader. Name the time, name the place, $20,000 donation to FDMG, and I will gladly intellectually assassinate any Negro you want. Give me 20 grand for the school, I'll debate anybody you want. Anybody you want for 20 grand. But if you ain't got 20 grand for the school, I'm not wasting my time. Because in the words of the last great revolutionary pan-African nationalist before me, his name was Dr. John Henry Clark. He was a master teacher. And Dr. Clark said, I only debate my equals. All others I teach. Pan-Africanist Dr. Clark said, I only debate my equals. All others I teach. Dr. Clark said, I only debate my equals. All others I teach. But if you want me to come down to his level, 20K, and I will gladly conduct the intellectual assassination. Don't nobody want no smoke with me. Don't nobody want no real smoke with me. Let me find this, because I'm going to get ready to let y'all go. Where are the Declaration of Rights? Uh, I'm trying to read y'all a couple of the Declarations of Rights. I'll read them next time. Maybe that'll be a whole live stream. But let me read this. This is an essay from the Honorable Marcus Garvey. Nah, I'm going to pass on that one. Let me do some quotes at the front. Let me do some quotes out of philosophy. I need to get this book if you don't have it. You need to get this book if you don't have it. You need to get this book if you don't have it. You need to get this book if you don't have it. You need to get this book if you don't have it. You need to get this book if you don't have it. You need to get this book if you don't have it. Okay. Queen Mother Amy Jakes Garvey. Queen Mother Amy Jakes Garvey. A Pan-Africanist in her own right. The second wife of the most honorable Marcus Garvey. Queen Mother Amy Jakes Garvey who compiled the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey. She looked just like the Honorable Marcus Garvey Jr. who passed away a few weeks ago in Florida. A couple Garvey quotes to close out the night. Garvey said The ends you serve that are selfish will take you no further than yourself. But the ends you serve that are for all in common will take you into eternity. Garvey said, a race without authority and power is a race without respect. Garvey said, a race without authority and power is a race without respect. Garvey said, a race without authority and power is a race without respect. The reason we don't get no respect, whether you vote or don't vote, Garvey is telling you right here. If you don't have no power, if you don't have no authority, you're not going to get no respect. They don't care if you got American citizenship, Democrat, Republic. We need power and we need authority. A race without authority and power is a race without respect. Garvey. Garvey said, this is the day of racial activity. 
when each and every group of the human family must exercise its own initiative and influence in its own protection. Therefore, Africans should be more determined today than they have ever been because the mighty forces of the world are operating against non-organized groups. Let me say it again. The mighty forces of the world are operating against non-organized groups who are not ambitious enough to protect their own interests. This is classical Garveyism. This is classical Garveyism. The mighty forces of the world are operating against non-organized groups of people who are not ambitious enough to protect their own interests. Garvey said, wake up Ethiopia, wake up Africa. Let us work towards one glorious end, a free and redeemed mighty nation. Let Africa be a bright star among the constellation of nations. Garvey said, the world has reached a stage when humanity is really at the parting of the ways. It is a question of man, mind thyself. African, look out for yourself. Stop trying to save everybody and save yourself. Garvey said, the political readjustment of the world means that those who are not sufficiently able nor sufficiently prepared will be at the mercy of the organized classes for one or 200 years. I'm going to repeat that because that's relevant right now. He said this 100 years ago. He prophesied this 100 years ago and it's still relevant right now. He said, the political readjustment of the world means that those who are not sufficiently able nor sufficiently prepared will be at the mercy of the organized classes for another one or two hundred years. Garvey said, the only protection against injustice is power. The only protection against injustice is power. The only protection against injustice is power. Physical, financial, scientific. We respect our Moorish brothers and sisters. We respect our Moorish brothers and sisters. We respect our Moorish brothers and sisters. After all, the prophet Noble Drew Ali and the most honorable Marcus Garvey were buddies, pals, and associates. They got along. Noble Drew Ali drove next to the honorable Marcus Garvey in the 1920 parade around Madison Square Garden. But we agree to disagree. They're not wrong and we're not wrong. They focus on the law. We focus on power. They focus on the policies and procedures. We focus on liberation and emancipation. I love y'all, my Moorish brothers. We all good. I'm going to let y'all focus on the law, but we going to focus on power. Garveyism is about the power. Garveyism is about being in a position to command your enemy to leave you the hell alone. That's Garvey. Garvey said, Nationhood is the only means by which modern civilization can completely protect itself. He said independence of nationality, independence of government is the means of protecting not only the individual, but the group. Nationhood, pan-African nationhood is the highest ideal of all people. Garvey said, let Africa be our guiding star. Garvey said, so many of us Find excuses to get out of the Negro race. Listen to me. This quote from Garvey is relevant to all of you African-American tribalists. All of you who ain't from Africa, all of you who ain't left nothing in Africa, all of you who want to call yourself slaves, but you don't want to call yourself Africans. You don't mind being a descendant of a slave, but you don't want to be a descendant of an African. You, you don't mind being the descendant of a slave, but you got a problem being the descendant of an African. I want you to listen to this. I want you to listen to this. This is for all you 
African-American tribalists, you anti-African Negro Americans. Listen to this. So, this is Garvey, quote, so many of us find excuses to get out of the African race. So many of us find excuses to get out of the African race because we are led to believe that the race is unworthy, that it has not accomplished anything. Cowards we are. Garvey said, if you trying to disidentify from being African, you a coward. Garvey said, you a coward. Stop trying to get an excuse to not be black. Stop trying to get an excuse to not be African. Garvey said, it is we who are unworthy because we are not contributing to the uplift and upbuilding of this noble race. Garvey said, how dare anyone tell us that Africa cannot be redeemed? When we have 400 million men and women with blood in their veins, Garvey said the power that holds Africa is not divine. The power that holds Africa is human and it is recognized that whatever man has done, man can do. If they can take Africa, we can take it back. If they can oppress us, we can eliminate it. Don't say you're the equal of another man. If you're at the same time saying you can't do for yourself what he has done for himself. If we want our children to be proud, then we have to lead the way. It is up to us to do this. Garvey said, we of the African race are moving from one state of organization to another. And we shall so continue until we have thoroughly lifted ourselves into an organization of government. Be as proud as your race today as our fathers were in the days of yore. We have a beautiful history and we shall create another in the future that will astonish the world. What did Muhammad Ali say? I shocked the world. I shocked the world. Garvey said we're going to shock the world again. Garvey said the world is run on bluff. No race, no nation, no man has any right to take advantage of other people. Why allow the other fellow to bluff you? Garvey said every student of political science, every student of economics knows that the race can only be saved through a solid industrial foundation. That the African race can only be saved through political independence. Take away industry from a race, take away political freedom from a race, and you have a group of slaves. That's Garvey talk. He said, take away industry from a race. Take away freedom from a race. And you have a group of slaves. Garvey said, leadership means everything. Pain, blood, and death. Garvey said, for those of y'all who want to know why Garveyites do not accept money, from non-Africans. If y'all want to know why FDMG does not accept money from non-Africans, grants and white loans, listen to this. The Negro who lives on the patronage of philanthropists. The Negro who lives on the patronage of philanthropists is the most dangerous member of the race because he is willing to turn back the clock of progress when his benefactors ask him to do so. Did you hear that? Obama maniacs, Kamala maniacs, the Negro who lives on the patronage of philanthropists is the most dangerous member of the race because he is willing to turn back the clock of progress when his benefactors ask him to do so. Garvey said, no race in the world is so just as to give others for the asking a square deal in things economic, political, and social. Races are selfish. Races look out for themselves. They don't care about African people. And we need to start prioritizing ourselves. We don't have to hate nobody. We don't have to hurt nobody. But we got to look out for us. Garvey said race first. The race is first, not your religion. The race is first, not your Masonic Lodge. The race is first, not your fraternity. The race is first, not your sorority. The race is first, not your nationality. The race 
is first. African family first. Garvey said, the greatest weapon used against the Negro is disorganization. The greatest weapon used against the Negro is disorganization. Garvey said, the greatest weapon used against the Negro is disorganization. I'm going to close with this quote and make some final comments. Remember, this is going to be a whole course. If you're interested in taking the course of Pan-Africanism, if you're interested in taking the course of Pan-Africanism, text my cell phone. I will lock you in. And when I'm ready to register the next class of students, I will let you know. You will have to pay. You will have to pay. It's not free. If you want to take the next course of revolutionary pan-African nationalism, starting in 2021, the next course, text my phone. I will lock you in and I will send you the information. There will be no more than 50 students. There will be no more than 50 students, 25 men, 25 women, if you're interested. 215-989-9858. J. Ogun. I hope you're not on here cooning, brother, because I'm the real Ogun right here. Real old goon is right here, brother. I hope you're not cooning. Last quote from the Honorable Marcus Garvey. If you have no confidence in self, you are twice defeated in the race of life. With confidence, you have won, even before you have started. This is the quote of the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. This is the quote of the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. If you have no confidence in self, you are twice defeated in the race of life. With confidence, you have won even before you have started. Brothers and sisters, that concludes tonight's seminar on who was Marcus Garvey. I hope you have been motivated and inspired to study more about Garvey. Make sure you get Garvey and Garveyism, written by Queen Mother Amy Jakes Garvey, Garvey and Garveyism, Black Power in the Garvey Movement. Make sure you get the Marcus Garvey Library, the encyclopedias of Marcus Garvey. Brothers and sisters, the whole encyclopedias. Make sure you get Garvey's children, brothers and sisters. And when you take the class, you're going to have to get these books anyway. If you're taking the class, you're going to have to get these books anyway. If you're taking the class, the course of Pan-Africanism, you're going to have to get these books anyway. Please donate to the school. Cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. If you've learned anything tonight, if these three or four hours I've given you are worth anything to you, donate to the future of black boys. Get on your cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Get on your PayPal. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. Text me if you need to mail in a check or money order. If you want to make a personal donation to Dr. Umar.